gosh. And there were occasions where I'd work very late. So let's say instead of 40 hours, I probably put more like, probably like 50 hours, probably more like 60 even because I was working um, a lot of evenings on a regular basis. So I went from eight, nine, six, so seven, working 28 hours a week. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this interview where I'm interviewing my wonderful client, Yvonne, who is an absolute force of nature. She shines so brightly, you need to put sunglasses on whenever you dial into a video <laughs> call with her. So Yvonne, why don't you tell the viewer, what is it that you do? And like, what, what problems I, do you solve? What was that, Dan? Like, what problems do you solve? What, what do you problems do? problems do you solve? So, <laughs> Um, I like to say that we position B2B entrepreneurs as thought leaders in their industry by building and strengthening their LinkedIn network through posts, connections, and engagement. And that okay. in turn provides more opportunities to expand the business. Okay. So that's like, yeah. so you're like, that's what we do. so you're basically a LinkedIn expert that knows how to write content for your clients. And, and how to have it posted and in the right way that basically enables them to create great business opportunities, lead sales, everything like that. Absolutely, absolutely. It all starts with positioning yourself as the expert, the thought leader in your space. So um, the folks often don't pay much attention to their own LinkedIn profile. Mm. It's really important to make sure that everything is set up properly in in your LinkedIn profile, providing value. Um, I sometimes like to say, you're not gonna invite people over to your home if it's not furnished. Like <laughs> where is there a place to sit? Where's a place to, to, to chat, to get value, to share? Um, and, and then another little funny analogy I say is we don't go hanging pictures on the wall uh, if we don't have windows set yet. So all <laughs> things in time, before we start posting, we make sure that your profile is properly set up and that you were positioned as uh, as a thought leader, so right. you can properly uh, uh, position yourself as as an expert. Yeah, and 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 it really makes sense, like positioning yourself. In other words, to be perceived as somebody who's an expert in your industry who delivers results and is good at what they do, basically, isn't it? Absolutely. And most entrepreneurs that I work with, they are very passionate about what they're doing. They're very good at their specific niche. But yeah. what they're not so good at is conveying that to the rest of the world. Yeah. So yeah. oftentimes entrepreneurs don't like to toot their own horn. They like the, the results mm. really to shine. And that's a challenge in getting new conversations, especially in the virtual world. Yeah. So yeah. much of it is, is similar as, as in the days of old when we actually met people in networking events and uh, it, it, that it's relationships. It's still about relationships. And people are approaching the virtual world now thinking that they have to uh, bombard people's message inboxes and just, just blurt out all their, their what they do. And, and it's just, it's too much. You have to start with conversation. Yeah. You start getting to know people and it's, still about relationships yeah. so that's that's the basis of, of how we do what we do yeah brilliant brilliant so you lead a team of eight to to do this for all your clients and before we started working together what was your day what were your days like like what was it like for you running the business dan it was frantic <laughs> it really was uh, I love, love what I do. I love working with exciting uh, businesses and entrepreneurs that are passionate about what they're delivering. So what I would end up doing is I would, I would finish dinner and then and I'd go back to work because I was just pouring myself into my work. Um, but really what was happening is I was becoming de deficient myself and I was completely out of balance. Um, and I was putting in a lot of hours um, I loved it, but it wasn't fair to my family and it wasn't fair to uh, the other parts of my life that, that are important. 
So um, you actually came along at a perfect time for me um, <laughs> because I really was just um, uh, overwhelmed. And I come from an operations background as well. So I know how to do all the things that we've implemented together, but it is a case of the shoemaker's kids not having any shoes. So <laughs> I was taking care of everybody else's and I really, um, you helped me so much in uh, putting it all together for myself and, and recognizing that, uh, that I could do more with less. Well, what, I mean, but so, you, you know, as we said earlier, you were working around 60 hours a week, some weeks. And yes. What impact was that having on your health? Oh my gosh. So I've, 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 I've had back issues for a long time, for decades. Yeah. Um, and um, I've had to take sabbaticals from uh, places that I worked previously in, in my life because my health was bad. I have some thyroid issues and just a variety of different things. And it really kind of became like a perfect storm. Mm. And um, and it, I, my health was really deteriorating wow. and all this work and unneeded stress, although it was welcome stress because I liked it, but I didn't see what it was doing to me physically mm. until I got to the point where I was. And I said, wait a minute, I have to halt. I have to so, reshuffle this whole thing. So you did know that you had an imbalance, a problem as such. Y yes. Actually, you, people who know me. People who know me intimately know that I am like <laughs> the race horse, like with the blinders. When I get a hold of something, I'm just, I'm on it and I just go and I don't stop. And I like to, um, whatever it is that I'm interested in, and I just, just unpack the package completely. I have to know everything about something, <laughs> you know, I just, that's just my personality. And folks have known that I, I've always desired more balance, but have not been so good at getting it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember I remember you saying, like when we first started talking, that you'd, you you've been trying to find balance, but you somehow haven't been able to. What what solutions were you looking for? What had you tried to try and find that balance before? You know, that's interesting. So um, a lot of what I think other people would try. And that is scheduling. I was just, I'll just schedule it in. <laughs> and, and what I ended up doing is putting all these things in my schedule with no sense of real priority and whatever didn't get done that day, I would just shift it to the next day alongside like the new stuff that I wanted to fit in. So yeah, I wanted right. to fit in walk and I wanted to fit in some exercise and I wanted to do some yoga. And then I also wanted to do uh, go well, going out to dinner with my husband. I wanted to go to the mall with my daughter. I went to, well, there's not enough hour in the day to keep doing. And I was overwhelming myself with mm. so many things that I wanted to do that I wasn't properly prioritizing the things that I should be. Yeah, right. So I needed to sift out things that were not so important. And you were a big part of that showing me how to do that. And we worked, we had some good sessions yeah. uh, of, of, of pulling back. Okay, is this really the most important thing? What is the most important thing? And to stop and think about it and prioritize it. So that the scheduling was one, but then I, you know, of course, post-it notes and uh, just reminders on the phone that would pop and just a <laughs> variety of things that most people try. And had you ever like researched or tried to find a program or a coach or someone that was a specialist in, in enabling you to get that balance? I never worked with a coach uh, on it. I, uh, I've taken just, gosh, tons of um, self-help type um, workshops and books and things like that. So I'm pretty yeah. well versed. In, and and, in, and so in, even, even with all those kind of self-development things that you did, it, you found it didn't give you the insights and the, and the knowledge that you needed to have the balance that you wanted still. Absolutely, absolutely. Because what you did for me was a very, very personal mm. um, experience. And very, very early on, um, I found myself surprised, actually, that we would be talking and I think to myself, 
oh, I've gone on too much. I need to, I need to stop now and let Dan talk. Because I tend to be like very gregarious and chatty and all of that. And then you'd ask me more questions. I'm like, yeah, he really wants to know more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we would chat some more. And then and, and I was like, okay, you know, I think that's enough. And then you ask some more and I'm like, oh, wow. Like you really delved in to the core. Mm. You were so present with me on every single meeting. <laughs> and that made a huge difference because yeah. I was shutting myself up. Yeah. But uh, you said, no, keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow. <laughs> so going back to the beginning, that there you are, you've got this imbalance going on. You're working all these hours, you know, and you're finding your health is impacted and I'm sensing your relationships and things like that. And what, what impact was that having you on being able to scale your business? Um, not, it wasn't, it wasn't a good impact. <laughs> uh, I just was kind of stuck. I think I had some, thankfully I, uh, I cross paths with some really amazing individuals. I have an amazing team. Yeah. And uh, they're phenomenal. And I love working with them. They're very passionate and very uh, loyal to our clients as well. And we've developed over time a really, um, a really great uh, process. But I couldn't scale it because, you know, it's really such an interesting question. I, I was my biggest obstacle. We couldn't scale it because of me. Yeah. Because I was continuing to keep my hands in so many pieces at the front end of the processes. Mm. So what I really needed to do is pull back and let them do their magic. And then I would come in at the end. Whereas in the beginning, you can't really scale it if you're on the front end of these processes and these things that you're working it's so great on. great that you say that now. You've seen it. Right? Yeah, right. So then, so there you are in this kind of stuck situation. You're not able to scale the business. How did you then find out about me? Well, it's funny because I saw you on Bryn Tillman's podcast. <laughs> so, yeah. love, love Bryn. Saw you uh, on a video, actually one of these, that you had worked with Bryn. And uh, if, number one, Bryn has no filter. I love that gal. And I love people who will tell you straightforward what they feel and what they think. And she said, you're awesome. So I'm like, this guy's wow. got to be awesome. <laughs> so I listened, I listened to that video and I loved your energy. And I loved how you just were so in the moment with her. And I could tell that the chemistry that you two had was, was the real deal. And I said, this guy's really interesting. I really, like, oh, he's kind of cool. All right. <laughs> I just kind of like kept my ears up. And then I think that was like a couple of weeks later, something happened. You did a poll or, or something like that. And you reached out to me. Yeah. And we just started chatting. Yeah. Organically, which is the way that you do it. But because I already knew, who you were and I'd seen a video of you and you came with a high referral from someone that I love and trust. Yeah. As I am giving, I'm going to talk to this guy. <laughs> he can help Bryn and he can help me. <laughs> yeah. I, and you know, it's wonderful to have worked with Bryn, you know, as you know, I worked with her for six weeks and managed to reduce her work hours by 60%. Yeah. So, and, and I get, obviously you heard about how I achieved that with her. So yeah. yeah. And then, and so then when we began working together, what were, what were like some of the insights that you got that I took you through that you felt made all the difference? Wow. So this was, um, we did some work that took me to the core of the types of things that were holding me back. Things I really hadn't thought about in a long time, but they're a common thread. In, in my life. And now as I continue on beyond the work that we've done together, I can see every day how those little things, that common thread um, affects some of my decisions, some of my behaviors and decisions and behaviors that are not necessarily always good ones. 
So are you, are you speaking about the transformation or the deeper work that we did? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which is where we uncover what is it that we subconsciously think about ourselves or think of ourselves. Yes. Which is ours. That, we don't know it's there until we have the opportunity of going through such a guided experience, right? Right. And that, that was really, um, for me, the beginning of me identifying what was the obstacle within me that I wasn't even aware of. Yeah. And I definitely see that identifying that and, and, and facing it and then having a revelation about that's not me. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's just not... a story. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. It's that, it's that point where you first move from unawareness to awareness of it. And then there's a new level of awareness, which is, oh my God, I, I invented it. It's not true. And I don't need to be that way anymore. Right. And there's that whole release of the past that has us yeah. when see a new future. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That, that's that been amazing. Brilliant. That'll stay with me forever. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's, the, that's the idea of it, right? When you can't unawaken out of something that you've awakened out of already. <laughs> right. <laughs> and we also did work around kind of creating your dream lifestyle. Yes. So that when we first um, connected and started our, our work together, I was living in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I'd lived yeah. in Pennsylvania since I was 19 years old. I was originally from New Jersey, but that up North, that was, that, that was all I knew. I'd done some traveling, but um, really at, had a desire to move to Florida um, after some visits in 2020 uh, of all times that we came down here for the first time up to the west coast of Florida and um, we just it got in my head like I, I need to do something about this like why am I living in this environment that for me Pennsylvania is beautiful and wonderful mm. but I just felt that I needed a change and I needed the endless summer that you wanted the sun to be by yes. the sea lots yes. of green and warm weather yeah and and you know it's funny I, I, there was a little bit of, of guilt associated with it at first um but i came to realize that this desire that i had in me i had to i had to really um I had to pay attention to that what and, do you mean what do you mean there was some guilt around that um because there were people in my life that made me feel a little guilty about leaving and oh, going, see. yeah, going to down to Florida. Um, and folks that wanted to go themselves, yeah, but um, didn't. And then there was a sense of, of, of guilt. And that's, I wasn't accepting that. And yeah. And I needed to work through that, um, that I'm, I'm living my life for me and not yeah. for pleasing others. Yeah, nice. And that was another layer of the work that we did, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so now, where do you live? Oh, we live 10 minutes from the beach. <laughs> we are, and we, we sold our house. We went from a four bedroom house. We're in a one bedroom apartment now because we're looking for our forever home. And it is beautiful here. I love it. Um, what what I area do you live in now? Uh, it's Bradenton. It's between Sarasota and Tampa. Okay. Florida. Yeah. Uh, it, the sun sets on this side of the coast. And wow. there's, there's so many preserves in the area. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say five to six times a week, I'm out power walking with just so many different types of birds and animals. And we have otters that come to this lake in the back of our apartment. <laughs> You're so lit go... up. You're so inspired and <laughs> alive about where you live now. It's amazing. So you basically moved to your dream location now. It's where you live. Yes. And it feels like I'm on vacation all the time. Wow. Who wouldn't want that? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. And, yes. and so... You're now working like over 50% less hours in your business. Yes. What was it that we did together that made that possible? You worked with me very closely 
to help me properly systemize uh, all the processes mm. that we had been going through and then detaching myself from that frontline work and having someone else do it yeah. and trusting the people that I trust so much yeah. and trusting them to do that work. And then little by little pulling myself away. So then I'm just at the approval stage. Nice. So uh, that's been huge. And uh, I, it, it's like being the orchestra leader in the front, oh. right? So it's like, okay, we need the violin and go. And here we go, a little bit of tuba. <laughs> yeah, nice. So, Nice. And then I like that, bringing it all together. And that's what being a CEO should be like, right? That's yes. why we created the business was for that experience and to have that free time to go and live the life that we want. So right. now that you've got that extra time, what's it made possible for you, like towards your health, perhaps? I'm feeling so much better. I, I'm feeling so much better. My back has not been... Uh, going out on me and actually in the before I moved and when we started talking I was concerned I was like I know it's going to go out I'm going to start exercising mm. I know I'm going to have a time where I'm going to be out for two weeks and, and laying in bed I just know it I have to be prepared for that mm. well that hasn't happened <laughs> why, do, why, why do you think that is um because I I scaled myself properly rather than going in full force yeah and yeah. yeah so in other words just for the viewer what we did was we came up with a routine that was sustainable for you that you could maintain every day right yes yeah. yes and the desire was mine it's not like you were telling me like this is what sure. you have to do like, <laughs> yeah. the desire came from me so these were goals that I set but I had like I knew I was going to be meeting with you <laughs> so I'm like okay I want to tell Dan that I did a good job I want to mm. tell Dan so having that accountability was so important because I yeah. knew I would be meeting with you in that initial stage of, of rebuilding um, what we did it was it was amazing to have a partner um, alongside of me uh, keeping yeah, me nice. truthful nice and and how has that impacted your business not having to do all those what work and those procedures like what difference does that make into your business and its ongoing success well there's actually a lot of good things that have happened as a result uh, in addition to now creating um, a, a program a system where we can plug people into um, and have our team work uh, on, on on their posts on their engagement on their connections their network and all of that we have the ability to scale and um, that, so that's great. The other aspect that I think is wonderful is the individuals that are working for iSell Social, they're really now empowered to do what they do best. Wow. So it's, a, it's the feedback that we get from, from the other folks is incredible. I love seeing that people like that, you know, I did this and they're taking pride in what they've done and they feel great or they're coming up with some great ideas. Actually, just this morning, we were having a, a small meeting and just really excited about one of the projects that our project commander came up with, a new idea. And I was like, this is brilliant. This is fantastic. We're going to be able to serve people in Brazil and Portugal um, with bilingual work on LinkedIn as like, we're going to develop this in 2022. So we're able to serve our clients better now as so it, a result. So it sounds like through the delegating, you've done it in a way that's empowered your employees. Oh, absolutely. And that's given them the space to just run and go and yes. now start to be able to grow your business whilst requiring even less of your time and management as your business now grows. Right, I, spot on. <laughs> wow, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. It, it's interesting, once you get the leadership right, so many parts of the business start to fall into place. Because as you say, 
you've now got that space to focus on scaling the business. What kind of things is it that you've been able to put into your business to now scale it that you couldn't put in before? So before I was writing a lot more of the, of the posts and, and blogs and articles and things. So I was doing a lot of that myself. Mm. So now we have someone else, a very, very talented gal, a couple of talented gals that are at the front lines and they're, and they're doing the, this and they're doing the writing. So we have super high end level writing for posts and it, there's incredible value because it's all personalized, personalized images mm -hmm. and personalized engagement and growing of the network. A bit, uh, entrepreneurs are busy. They don't have time yeah. for, for doing all this themselves. So when they use us, it's not just me that you're getting. You're getting a whole team of people yeah. that are passionate about, about what we're doing. So it's, uh, it's just magnified every, every product and every service that we have. Amazing. is better than it was a year ago. And, and as your team are now delivering all that and you've got these, these extra hours, how are you able to use those hours to scale your business, to take it to new heights? Oh, because now I can, I'm more on the front lines of talking to entrepreneurs that are seeking help. Mm. So in other words, sales and prospecting. Um, and I'm, I, I'm doing the same processes that we do for, for our clients. They're all tried and tested on our end. Like we use them for ourselves. So that gives me the opportunity to really interact with people on, on the front end. And that's what I love. I love to be able to, uh, to talk to entrepreneurs. And sometimes they don't even know they, they need help. Honestly. Yeah. Right? It's true, I'm sure you right? come across that. It's like, it's like, no, no, we're all good. It's like, yeah, it's just like struggle is normal. <laughs> Intense pain and struggle is just normal. I just, I'm just a CEO. It's supposed to be like that. <laughs> and it's not. No. It's not. No. no. And it's wonderful to be able to work from anywhere. Like uh, last week, I took one day and I went to the beach. And, you know, I chose to open up my phone and do a little bit of interacting, a little networking during that time. So it wasn't a total, you know, like me time on the beach, but I could work from the beach. Yeah. And no. it, it, we're in December now. It was like a July day down here. It was lovely. It was wonderful. No. And being able to work from anywhere that I want is wonderful. And uh, it's just been great. It's been a really great um, experience. And um, I'm so excited for what this year ahead has for us. Very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that makes you excited about it? The possibilities, because there's so many folks out there that need what we offer. Yeah. And because they're kind of stumbling through, like they might be really good at tech, right? They're running a tech company. And their service that they provide is phenomenal. They're top grade. They know what they're doing. Mm. But they don't know social media marketing. They don't know marketing much. They might even have a marketing person mm. on the team. But half the time, these folks aren't really familiar with LinkedIn and how LinkedIn works. So there's people out there that we can help to get their message across. And, and, of, and of course, what's really making you excited is that you now don't need to be delivering that work in your team you're now overseeing a team whilst you yeah. go and create those opportunities so it means that you now you're, you're now out of your own way to just now be able to grow and really scale the business right yes yeah yes. absolutely and that's the exciting part also is to be able to work um with entrepreneurs who are passionate about what they're doing what they're delivering, their value proposition. I'm getting to work with folks who are passionate. Yeah, nice. That's great. Yeah, dream. I work true. with people who are, and, and not everybody is for me, and I'm not for everybody. Yeah, but sure. when the match happens, it's amazing. They're yeah. like family. My, our clients are like family to us. Yeah, amazing, you know? amazing. So, what was it when you first 
got into conversation with me. What was it that made you commit to registering for one of my programs? What made me commit? Yeah. Well, I knew that what I had been doing in the past was not working mm. because I always ended up circling back to the same position. And I knew I needed to do something different. Yeah. Mm. And the recommendation that you came from with Bryn was, and I called her too afterwards. Did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. And, and she gave me the thumbs up. She says, yeah, this guy, this guy's awesome. I was like, oh, wow, really excited. And so I'm like, I'm going to do it. And it, it is a referral business. And she didn't, you initiated with me and we talked and that was, and I, that's perfect. Yeah, because it made me feel like when you reached out to me, made me feel like I'm I'm worthy. I'm yeah, worthy nice. to be sought out. Like my business is growing. That there's a coach out there who's seeing that I'm providing some value, and he wants to help take me to the next level. I thought this is good. This this <laughs> could really work. Yeah, nice. And I hesitated a little. I guess as most people would. But I'm super glad that I did make that that jump because it's been nothing but but fantastic. Nice. Everything is in line um, within uh, the time period that we worked. Achieved, I don't know, like ninety percent of my goals or something yeah. like that in all these different areas of my life. Health, relationship, finances, freedom, lifestyle, balance. Yeah. 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 It's been amazing. So if somebody's like thinking of working with me, but they're not sure, what would you say to them? Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Absolutely. You, if someone's never worked with a coach before, I would say, think of an athlete. So athletes are just like leaders. Mm. They go farther and become better when they have the right coach beside them leaders need coaches just like athletes need coaches mm, wow yeah powerful statement yeah great so for people that are like in your niche like people who are wanting to grow their business through using online strategies but they're not quite sure how to best go about it what advice would you give them? So for folks that want to, to maximize LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say on LinkedIn. Yeah. So I would say for folks that want to maximize LinkedIn, that there's, there's three, I call it the three legged stool. I know it's not sexy, but it's real. So the three legged stool is content connections and engagement. Mm -hmm. So you need to have, content you need to create good content regularly have a good cadence for it whether if it's once a week or twice a week just consistently put out that good valuable content valuable so it has providing value to your audience not necessarily a big long list of things that you do give tips give instructions give give value so that's content the next is engagement uh, you want to make sure that you are engaging with other people in your network. Don't go to the networking event and then face the wall. Mm -hmm. right? Go in and start talking to people. Start making conversations. Just make small talk. I noticed that you're in Miami. I've been doing, you know, did you like this? But whatever, just get talking. If yeah. you like their company, if you have someone in common, um, just get talking. So that's uh, engagement. And uh, so content, oh, connections, grow your network, make the plunge and pay for sales navigator, the one year uh, subscription, uh, annual subscription to LinkedIn's sales navigator. This is a database of all the LinkedIn users mm. in the world. Yeah. So you can go in there and say, I want to talk to everybody in the United States. I want to talk to people that are in the healthcare industry. I'm going to talk to people that are in a company that are from 50 to 100 people. 
with than our CEOs that are so you can dig down and find your exact buyer persona. Mm, nice, yeah. And then systematically say, hey, I've always enjoyed working with people in the healthcare industry. Care to connect? Yeah, nice. That's it. Don't pitch. Yeah. Just, and then once you get all these people, you start engaging with them, engage with their with their content, and that three legged stool works if there if you have three legs. Yeah. Because you can put content, but if it's the same old eyes, you don't have a growing network. Yeah. You don't have people, new people looking. What's the use? The same old people are looking and they're not interested. Yeah. So it's an important part and being engaging. The, the friendly guy at the networking event, talking to everyone is going to be someone that I feel comfortable walking up to and talking to because yeah, he's talking nice. to everybody. So all the rules of how we do it in person are the same rules on LinkedIn when we do it virtually. Brilliant. You can so see that you really are an expert of LinkedIn and relationship building and using LinkedIn for creating opportunities. Really great. So if somebody wanted to find out about you and what you do and just, just connect with you to find out more, where would they go? Uh, they could go to um, my LinkedIn profile. Yvonne Ribeiro, Yvonne Ribeiro, I-V-O-N-N-E-R-I-B-E-I-R-O. Yeah, Yvonne or, Ribeiro. Yeah. Or go to iSellSocial.com. That's our website. iSellSocial.com. Brilliant. Amazing. Yvonne, it's been such a pleasure. And, you know, I, watching you now, having really mastered this leadership, have got everybody in place feeling empowered, and you being there, the conductor of this orchestra, I feel like I'm yeah. in the audience watching the orchestra eating popcorn. Like <laughs> I'm so excited to see, you know, everything that you, you know, achieve over the next year. Cause it's quite clearly, you know, it's going to be amazing. Good on you. I'm so honored that I got to work with you and to be part of your story of success. Thank you so much, Dan. I, that means a lot to me. I really appreciate that. And uh, you are a big key. You have been a big key in, in orchestrating this uh this business of ours um, thank you so much thank you i've been a big keen orchestrating the orchestrator yes <laughs> i'm glad you picked up on that <laughs> <laughs> cheers yvonne speak to you soon cheers thank you bye bye, -bye.